<clears throat> All right. Oh, Henshaw here again. You're walking Constitution out here in San Francisco, California. For what that may be worth, the state or a territory, we don't know, and they don't know in Sacra Tomato either. Not the subject of this video. We're going to be talking about the good old child procurement uh, syndicate here, the CPS, and what you can do about it. And we may, and we look like we have some real issues here, structural jurisdictional errors that we can get in there and take care of business, particularly with the writ of habeas corpus. And I have just drafted a customized habeas corpus for that purpose, you know, especially for any case that arises in a quote unquote state court, AKA administrative tribunal that we file in a federal district court or what looks like one, but what will be an article three federal circuit court and now we have some real issues and some real rights, status and standing to bring them. And all of it makes sense. I mean, can you think of anything more possibly indicative of a creator endowed in alienable right than giving birth? I mean, I can't imagine the government thinks they can license that, although they probably do, but won't admit it. Uh, but that said, you know, I've been going over this thing called the Adoption and Safe Family Act of 1997. <clears throat> federal law in an area where federal law has nothing to do with anything, at least pursuant to the original intent of the framers of the Constitution. And I can't see where anything has changed. And the good news for us is it looks like, you know, at least five, if not six, and maybe more members of the U.S. Supreme Court have gotten the message here. You know, finally, after 90 years, starting to act like an Article Three judicial court, that means they're gonna have our backs on a lot of these issues, especially with the CPS. And even if that power exists and it doesn't, as you'll learn from getting my materials, by the way, send me an email, you went in court at gmail.com. It's absolutely stunning what you learn about this, but there's no way the federal government has any possible connection to your children your children right now yeah. interesting question so that said you know we get back um, to what i was saying with the cps and the problem is even if that power exists and i'm not sure it would exist on the state level either quote unquote state maybe locally but as a preliminary matter to invoke the jurisdiction they think you have and summarily come and do a, what they call a hatch and snatch. I have a friend of mine that happened to, whose daughter was born back in May. Three days later, they come and take her away, and my friends haven't seen her yet. But I've just gotten this writ to them to see what we can do to rectify that situation. But they can't do it, and they did this on a clearly premeditated perjured warrant. It doesn't matter to these batches. They think they have at least qualified judicial immunity, if not outright immunity against any and all actions. And you're going to learn a lot about that, that they're dead wrong. Uh, send me an email, court at gmail.com. And we are going to have our remedies against these batches. And once that starts to happen, we're going to shut them down forever, which is exactly what needs to occur here with that agency and a lot of other ones. So it's just all good news for us here. But back to the problem, you know, if the power exists, in my view, uh, not only would it take beyond a reasonable doubt at a trial, and you never see that standard upheld by any of these black robe bastards, but as a preliminary matter, it would seem to me it would take two affidavits of two witnesses, not government workers and sure as hell not CPS agents, attesting to the same fact, you know, to create at least clear and convincing evidence for preliminary action. But that never happened, and it was never planned to with these statutes we're forced to deal with these days. So this is a major big deal, and the U.S. Supreme Court's going to have our backs with what they've done in the last two terms and going into the third one. And they're sounding, again, a lot like me, even while they're on vacation, having taken a couple of very interesting cases on the 14th Amendment to which the CPS is intimately related. We'll see what happens. By the way, a, a YouTube video you need to watch on this is called Th These Little Ones by uh, Stu Peters. 
S-T-E-W, Peter, and you look at this video and see what happens here. This is an example of what goes on with this crap because nobody knows the right issues to present. And attorneys, you know, State Bar Association attorneys, otherwise known as unregistered foreign agents of at least the city of London, will not raise any of these issues. And since you haven't gotten any more of an education than what I got back in the day, outside of Washington, D.C., in my case, for crying out loud, they didn't teach any of this stuff. Of course, the CPS might have been non-existent in that era, but nevertheless, you know, all these administrative agencies they have, and the Supreme Court and now the Fifth Circuit are coming down hard against this kind of administrative law, and they damn well should be. This is great news for all of us. So that said, you know, get my material, send me an email, you went in court at gmail.com. I have a customized motion to dismiss the CPS case and a customized writ of habeas corpus to take to the federal court to remove a CPS case from a quote unquote state court, aka administrative tribunal, who doesn't have any authority at all. So you've got no judges, no courts, no juries, no injured party. What the hell is this? Where did we make a voluntary, knowing, and intelligent waiver of any of these rights, particularly in this context? It's not there, but as you'll learn, that's the reference standard for the U.S. Supreme Court to find a waiver like that, and it can't be done. That's part of my bill of particulars that you get with my document package is a killer. 14 pages from hell, they can't answer two paragraphs. So I don't want to run on here too much, but you get the idea. This is a big agency, and if they make progress here, whatever applies to the CPS applies across the board. Traffic court, criminal court, family court, you name it. Uh, it they all run on the same BS 14th Amendment due process of equal protection. <clears throat> and as you'll learn by getting my materials, uh, send me an email, you went in court at gmail.com. The 14th Amendment not only does not exist, it never has. And that's the only jurisdiction these black road bastards have. That said, subscribe, like the videos, get the word out, tell your friends, especially in this area. Because the sooner we get out there and start raising issues like this, the sooner they're going to have to answer them, and they don't have any answers. I've never had any of my documents even acknowledged, let alone answered, because if they do it, the official actors have now convicted themselves of treason to the Constitution on the record. And there's that pesky U.S. Supreme Court saying it again. They're going to love it. Send me an email, youwinincourt at gmail.com. And like I say, the sooner we act together and break up this divide and conquer BS they've been doing for 150 years, the quicker we get these bastards off our backs. Thank you.